Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be building off of my last upload on this channel, which had to do with palette creation space in AutoCAD. And today we're going to look at how to create palettes and lay them out in an optimal and efficient manner. So if you've ever been to a warehouse, you might see that there is something of a palette C within the warehouse. How or what is the best way to lay out those palettes so you can fit the most in? while being able to travel through the warehouse and find those pallets. So in this video, we're gonna kinda of go into a little bit of a deep dive to discuss that. With that being said, please consider subscribing to the channel. Helps me out a lot, helps me understand if you guys are enjoying the content. If you find the video helpful, give it a like down below. If you think someone else could find this video helpful as well, give it a share. And if you wanna see anything else done in AutoCAD or engineering related, leave it in the comment section below. All right, so we're gonna jump into this right away. And the first thing you'll notice is this is the Warehouse Design Series Warehouse Shell. So if you have followed that series, this should look familiar if you haven't, it's in my channel. But this is going to be the Warehouse Shell we're gonna use for this example and or case study. So the first thing I wanna note is just where specifically we want the pallets in this warehouse. So originally there was some rack in the warehouse. Instead, I took that rack out. Now we're gonna put pallets in. So. What we're going to do here is we are just going to kind of outline this area and we are just going to put pallets from this upright to this upright to this upright to this upright to this upright. So this is going to be the area where our pallet storage is going to be. This is the theoretical area that we want to put it in. We can expand it more, but right now, for the sake of this example and to optimize pallet storage, this is the square footprint that we are gonna wanna use. So what we wanna do is, I'm for my own reference, I just wanna find out real quick how big this is. So we have 215 by 215 roughly. So 215 by 215 feet is roughly 46,000 square foot of space. So we have roughly 46,000 square feet of space to use and a pallet is roughly 13 square feet. So what we're gonna do is we are going to see how many pallets we can fit into this area. Now, there are a couple ways to do this and there are a couple things worth noting. The first and foremost is what type of storage is this going to be? So is this going to be pallet storage that will never be touched? Or is this going to be pallet storage that you'll need to actively engage with and actively pull product from? That's gonna be very important because if you are going to put a bunch of pallets of product in that area that will never be touched or be touched once a year, you can kind of uh, quadruple stack them up. But if they need to be touched very often, then you are going to wanna to create a lot more space, a lot more travel aisles, and you're gonna be able to pull those pallets out right here, right now. All right, so the first example we're gonna do is we're gonna look at this pallet area as the dark storage or the area that we really aren't going to touch many times a year so we can kind of add more pallets to it. So what we're going to do is we're going to create the pallet and I have a video for this that I'll link above. It's really very simple but the standard pallet is 48 inches long by 40 inches wide and then we're going to come up here and just continue that on and we're going to add an X in it just to denote that it is a pallet. Now the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add a little bit of space between each one because that you can't just have the pallets butt up to each other. You can get close, but typically what I do for the pallets back to back, if they're gonna sit there like that, we are gonna add two inches worth of space. So you have two inches right there. And then we are going to actually start moving these pallets and putting them into position. And I'm going to stack them four deep. Now again, and I'm gonna erase this, but the reason I'm stacking these four deep is because if these pallets aren't gonna be utilized through much of the year, they theoretically won't need to be moved. So you can have these two pallets that are inside right here, these two pallets, they'll be inside and these ones won't be able to be touched. But again, if you're not touching them at all throughout the year, you're good. Now, we're going to start by putting those right. We're going to move this selection, and we're just going to put it right against the column. And then we are going to now start bringing these all the way down. 
So the next thing we're going to do is create a little bit of space between the two. And I usually like about four to six inches. We'll use six inches this time. But I usually like about that much. And then I'm just going to come over and copy. We're going to go right here. And we're just going to go all the way down at this point. And once you get big enough, then all of a sudden you can just come back up here and recopy all the palettes and just start making big chunks. You can also do this with the array function. I don't like the array function, so I'm not going to use it, but it's an option that you have. And as you can see, we're just filling this area up with palettes. And we're going to stop right here. All right, so I went ahead and actually took out all the little measurement lines for six inches. And the next thing we're going to do is actually measure out the aisle line. So you might ask yourself, why can't I just fill this entire area with pallets? Well, the reason is because there is a life safety slash fire safety issue that you run into. You cannot have a completely blocked off area without some sort of path of egress or exit within the building. Therefore, we need to make sure we have some aisles. Now, do you need as many aisles as this? No, but I find that four pallet position allows you to take some up, put some away. It's very convenient and easy for someone that's not going to touch the pallets too often, but again, wants to touch them a little bit. So as far as code specifics go, what you're going to do is you're going to want to reach out to your local government and they'll be able to tell you what the fire safety plan needs to look like. Now, what we're going to do here is we're going to add in the aisle width. And how I'm going to do that is I'm just going to come off seven feet from this pallet. Now, again, seven seems kind of narrow, but we're not going up into racking. We're not going up into high base. So you really don't need a whole lot of space to maneuver around in here. Seven feet should be plenty with a small pallet jack or a small forklift. So we're going to come here. We're going to copy. And again, you can make it more than seven feet if you want to. I just choose seven to kind of optimize the space. And then we're going to bring that right there. And then we are going to bring this down again. I'm not sure why that didn't copy over. But we're going to bring the seven feet down again. And we are going to continue this on. All right, so I ended up finishing up the rows. What we got down here is we have nine sections of 57 total rows of pallets with four pallets each. What that's going to get you is 2,052 pallets. You have to include the 10 that we removed for the cross beams. Now, the other thing I want to mention is that not all of these aisles are 7 feet. So what we had to do here is we had to add this one and bump it out a little bit longer than 7 feet. That way we weren't going to have these cross beams in the aisle, excuse me, uprights in the aisle. These uprights need to be buried in the pallet seat. You do not want these in the aisle because then they risk being damaged by forklifts or other MHE. You want these buried in the pallet seat. I know that might not seem great because you lose pallet locations, but I promise you, you do not want those in the aisle way. So with that being said, you're roughly looking at 2,050 pallet locations for this entire area. So 46,000 square feet is going to give you about 2050 pallet locations. All right, so now that we've seen what the cold storage looks like or the dark storage or storage that's not going to be used regularly, we're going to flip and we're going to look at what we can optimize or how we can optimize pallet space if you need to have access to those pallets on a daily basis or a very regular basis. You're not going to want them for deep considering that those pallets in the middle might need to be pulled on a regular daily basis. So what we're going to do here is we're actually just going to come in and we're going to delete all of this, just the regular pallets. And then I'm going to pull two pallets right here from this row. We're going to copy those and we're going to bring them down. So what we're going to do now is we're actually going to come up and delete the three pallet positions like that. Actually, we're just going to delete them all. And what we're going to do here is we're going to move this up. We're going to bring this into position right here. Now, what this allows us to do is create these pallet positions the way we want to, and we're going to use the same spacing. 
and you'll see here in a second, but we'll use the same spacing of seven feet. And we're now going to copy and paste these and bring these all the way down. So again, this is a prime example. We do not want that in the row, so we're going to bring it down just a little more than seven feet. Come up here. Just keep bringing them down. That's going to fall in line. We're perfect. Whoop. We actually want that lower. We, again, do not want those uprights in the path. Hit copy. We want to move that. And we move that down a little bit more. Then we have this right here. And again, apologies, this is kind of slower work, but we're gonna come right here. And we are going to bring that down and make that the end. Actually, and again, this is the technical stuff that you'll get into. You can kind of move stuff, finagle stuff around. Um, so for this example, I'm actually going to, let's see if we can fit this in. This is a great, great. So we can fit this in. So what I'm gonna do here is leave that there and kind of go over just a little bit. All right, so I've gone back through and deleted all the measurement lines within that. I've also deleted the palette areas that are in the way of uprights. And after that, what you'll see here is around 1700 before the uprights minus the one, two, three, four, five, five times 20, five times five is 25. So 1710 is the total minus 25 is really 1685. So you're getting 1680 pallets roughly versus the 2050 pallets that you're getting with the um, extra storage. So depending on your business needs, there are two ways that you can do this. You can do the um, bulk storage like we looked at in the first example where you have four long, or you can do this where you can access every single pallet. And the other important thing to call out is that yes, you can access every single pallet. If you go up this row, you've got this. If you've got this row, you've got that. They're back to back. That way it's easily accessible and you can pull them as you need. Now, the last thing I wanna say is again, all of these most likely depending on your municipality will need to be cleared with some sort of drawing and some sort of permit. So you'll need to show where the exit lights are. You'll need to show the paths of egress throughout this area. But again, this is kind of the high level look. So with a more detailed version and a version that you will need to pull pallets from regularly, you want this, you're gonna have less pallet storage. For an area that you are gonna pull pallets from really at all, you'll be able to load that area up and have roughly 500 more locations. All right, so I know it was a little bit of a longer video. Thank you for sticking around. If you did watch the end of it, I truly appreciate it. I appreciate you guys very much. Uh, the channel's growing awesomely. If you want to see anything else done engineering related or industrial engineering related, efficiency related, leave it down below in the comments. I would love to hear it. With that being said, thank you for watching the video and I hope to see you guys in the next one.